we've always got to remember is remind ourselves that we are not what we used to be, we are not who we used to be, and we don't belong to who we used to belong to. And so if you got your Bibles tonight, I want you to go with me in the, in the second chapter of the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2. We're going to read just a few verses in here. Um, so uh, I want you to find this. Ephesians, for you that are not Bible proficients in the New Testament. Ephesians chapter 2. Please stand this evening, this evening for the reading of God's Word. I'm going to start in verse 1, and this is what it says. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in times past you walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sin, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved." And hath raised us up together and made us, sit, uh, made, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come today in the mighty name of Jesus. We come to you thanking you for the works that you've begun in us. The work that goes on and continues even every day that we live and even goes into the future because you're not done with us yet. And Father, we thank you for your love, your mercy, your grace, and your compassion. And thank you what you've got in store for us. For we give you praise tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. If we were to sit down and look and say this, who do we belong to and why do we belong to them? A lot of times we think we are our own man or own person, but, but the reality of it is we're not. The reality of everything to come is that God formed us, God created us, God gave us life, God gives us breath, and the Bible says this, in him we live and we in and in him we live and move and have our very being in Christ Jesus. So if it comes down to it, who do we really belong to? We belong to God. And the thing that a reason I wanted to read tonight in the second chapter of Ephesians is to remind us we are different than what we were before. There should be a difference between daylight and dark. In our life, and I call it B.C. and A.D., before Christ and after deliverance. But we begin to understand that our lives are set up in a way that we are changed. And God brings change in our life through Jesus Christ. He brings the power of the gospel, the power of grace, the power of deliverance, and He brings it in and instills it into our life. And then what does He change us? The Bible said he's changed us from glory unto glory, from the glory of the earthly to the glory of the heavenly. We are a, a creature that is still being created every day. We live and we walk in the newness of life, in the glorious, glorious gospel that Jesus brought. But you know what? He's not done with us yet. I read one place that in the Bible that said in six days he created the heavens and the earth and everything that was. And then on the seventh day, he rested. And I got to thinking, for almost 60 years, almost 50 years, God has been working on me every day trying to get the kinks out of me, trying to get the problems out of me, trying to get the darkness out of me, trying to get me into what he wants me to be. And I began to realize something. God is more concerned about me than what he was of the earth, moon, and stars and all of the cosmos. 
And how many people do I see that God's still working on? How many people do I see that does not yet walk in completion of maturity in the body of Christ? You know, when we sat down and look at it, uh, the Bible says, Be thou perfect because I am perfect. The word perfect means to be mature, complete. But yet the thing about it is that is the ultimate goal of God is to bring us into the maturity that God can use us. But you know what? A lot of times we forget he's still working on us. We forget and then the next thing you know when we foul up there comes a guilt problem in our life and we go, well I just can't live it anyway. I fouled up again. But how many of you know this? That Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of the majesty of God, offering intercession for us. When we begin to understand that God wants us to be right and act right and do right, but he's also gone beyond that. He has made a provision for us that when we don't do right, he is there to restore us back into the fellowship. But what does it take? It takes us coming to the place to where we want to be right with God. When we come to that place that we want to live right and act right and do right, and when we do wrong, there is a little voice or a little conviction in us that goes, you should not do that. Isn't it funny how that, the, that God gave ten commandments and they said, thou shalt not. And out of ten things that we should not do and cannot do, look at all the millions of things that we can do, because the Bible says this, for I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. A lot of times we focus on the negative, but we don't look at the positive. You know, the thing we've got to understand in our life is God gave us his word to mature and to train us. A preacher told me one time the word Bible means basic instruction before leaving earth. If there's ever a time we need instruction in God is in the day we're living. Right now, right here, in this present time, do we need the glory, the power of the Almighty God on planet earth today? I've had people say, oh, I can't wait till I get to heaven. Oh, I can't wait to walk on the streets of gold and live in the great palaces and the great rooms and everything that he's got uh, prepared for us. And that'll be fine and dandy, but I got news for you. God does not need you in heaven. He needs your big mouth on planet earth today being the signpost to point a lost and dying world to a Savior that hung on a cross 2,000 years ago. But you know, sometimes we just feel like that we're not doing any good, but you know, I got news for you. It's not us that done it. It doesn't rest on us it rests on him to keep us because we have entrusted our life and our soul into the finished works of Jesus Christ. I a lot of times meet people that are constantly doing the battle in the mind. And they say, I, oh, I, I, I can't live this or I don't do this right or I don't do that right. But how many times do we realize that God knows who we are because he created us, he designed us, he knows our faults, our kinks, our quirks, our strong points and what we're good for, but yet he still loves us. And the Bible said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, not to them that love him, but to them that need him. Them, not them that really want to follow God, but them that really needs to reach out to God to let the abundant life of God come into their life. So when we begin to understand what Paul's talking about here, he's saying, look, we're not who we used to be. We're not doing the things we used to do. We're not doing all the things that the world says is all right because we walk to a higher standard, and that higher standard is Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ comes into our life, he elevates our morality into what it should be rather than what we want to be. Paul said here in times past, I followed the sins of the flesh. I done the things I wanted to do. I went my way. I followed my course. I marched to the beat of my own drum. But those days are done. The Bible said this over in the book of Acts that when Paul was on the road to Damascus there shined a light, a light around him. And the Bible said brighter than the noonday sun. And he heard Christ speak his name. And it literally changed his life 
forever from that point forward. Today I'm going to ask you something. Have you heard the voice of God? Have you heard the voice of God telling you, calling your name and telling you that you need to do better and do right and do the things that he's called you to do? Or do we just ignore that voice? How many times in our lives do we ignore and everybody tells me I've got selective hearing? Because we as men and husbands and all this, we kind of tune out the things that we don't want to hear. And sometimes I'm afraid we do that with God. I'm afraid sometimes we tune God totally out of the input pattern in our life. But you know what? That's not the way it should be. And God wants us to reach out towards Him. God wants us to walk with Him. God wants us to fellowship with Him. God wants us to literally explore the universe together with Him. And that's why He done this. And you know what I really liked about this passage that I read? It says this in verse 7, that in the ages to come, He might show the exceeding riches of His grace in His kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Folks, I'm going to tell you something right now. God is great in the day we're living in. God is good, and I tell people this. Everything that God has ever done for me, all the days of my life have been good and very good. But that's nothing compared to what's in the future for the children of God, them that will allow Him to be Lord of their life and let God be the God of His people. You know, I don't know what God's got in store. I've sat a lot of times, and you know, Gary Williamson, me and him would sit and speculate a lot of times. Gary, what's it going to be like when we're in the streets of gold and bowing down before the throne of God and everything else? And he said, ooh. He said, I, 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 I don't know. He said, my, 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 I don't know what, what that's going to be like, but I want to tell you this. He said, that's going to be glorious. And I got to thinking, The Bible said where two or three are gathered in his name, he's in the midst. Whenever we gather in the name of Jesus, the Bible declares and promises he is here. And as Ramona sung that song tonight, how many of you know that everywhere you are, Jesus is if he's Lord of your life? Tonight I'm going to ask you this. Is he Lord of your life? Is he the King of kings and the Lord of lords? Is he the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end of your life and your faith? Is he the author and the finisher of your faith that leads you in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake? If you're sitting listening to this tonight, then I will be the first to tell you if he's not, he can be. If he's not, he wants to be. If he's not, he came to be born into a stinking stable to be betrayed, crucified, dead, and buried because he loved you that much. And he wants to you to spend all of eternity with him. But tonight I'm going to ask you something. Can we allow God to be God of our life? Will we listen and will we follow and will we act and will we live the way that he wants to Or are we still in rebellion? Tonight I'm going to ask you this. If we want a change in our life, the Word of God says I can do all things through Christ that powers us. He is the power for our change. You know, tonight I want to say this in closing. If we will allow God to have place in our life, then we're going to, for the first time in our life, have life that's worth living. How many of you know that even the book of James says this, that the days of man are are like a vapor on the water. Here one minute and gone the next. And it goes another place talking about days of sorrow, how that there's trouble on every hand. But here is the thing about it. Paul said this, If only in this world I have hope, I would be a man most miserable. My hope rests beyond This realm that we see. My hope rests beyond what I can see and touch. My hope rests in the finished works of Jesus Christ. When he hung on that cross 2,000 years ago and said it is finished, I believe him. And because I believe him, he become my Lord and my God. He became my Savior, my Deliverer, my Healer, and my friend. And tonight God wants to be your friend. 
You know, the Bible said this about Enoch. Enoch was and was not. Because it was said of him that he had a testimony that pleased God. Folks, can you imagine what it would be like to be in such close relationship with God that all of a sudden you're here molecularly and the next moment you're gone? Hallelujah. I'm telling you, what a way to go. But tonight I want to say this in closing. Jesus has paid the price. He's bought the redemption. He's brought the, bought the salvation. He's brought salvation to planet earth. And he's offering it to everyone that will listen and everyone that will receive it. I would like for everyone in the, in the tabernacle tonight to please stand. And I'd like for your head bowed right now for a moment, please. I want you right now to just begin to cry out for the lost in America. I want you to cry out for the lost around the world. I was told a couple days ago that they're having a great revival in, in Kenya and that the Spirit of God is moving in such a great and mighty way. I don't know about you, and I praise God for revival in Kenya, but what we need is a revival in Kentucky. We need the power of God descending in our churches here. We need the Spirit of God rising up and holding us up and lifting us up into what God is wanting us to do. Father, right now we come.